Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to Utility Sports. In today's video, we're going to be taking another look at an offseason preview. And in this video, we're focusing on the Atlanta Falcons. Of course, a very interesting season that just wrapped up for them a couple weeks ago. And now they're going to turn their eyes to the offseason. Uh, of course, first year head coach Arthur Smith, I think, did a really good job with this team. I don't think there's a ton of talent on this roster uh, to have found as much success as they did in the NFC. Uh, and I think there's a lot to build off of going into year two of his tenure there. Atlanta, they got a pretty good group of guys. Uh, and I'm a big believer in what Arthur Smith's going to be as a head coach after his first year. Uh, he's really won me over as someone who trusts in him and his offensive play calling specifically. I think he's someone who really understands offensive side of the football. And I'm really excited about what the future could hold here for Atlanta. Falcons fans, if you're excited as well, make sure to leave a like on today's video. Subscribe if you're new and also leave a comment because we got something very exciting to announce. This video is actually sponsored by Icer Brands. We're going to be working with Icer Brands. They're an NFL distributor for gear and also some other nice products for the NFL. And we're going to actually be doing giveaways from Icer Brands into the future. So if that's something you're ever interested in winning, this will be the place you want to be subscribed to have a chance at some of those free giveaways. This video here uh, and this month, we have a free giveaway of the New York Giants. So here we've got a nice little quarter zip for the New York Giants. You see their logo right there. Backside, very nice as well. It's got that nice Giants logo. So it's very, very nice quarter zip. Just sent it out to us this week. So we're very excited to be working with Icer Brands. Uh, and this video is brought to you by them. So hopefully you guys do enjoy Again, leave a like, subscribe, comment, so you can be entered for a jersey giveaway. Uh, excuse me, not the jersey giveaway, but the quarter zip giveaway. I'm used to saying jersey giveaway because we've had a few of those on the channel. We're going to have another one coming soon as well. So a lot of stuff here going on for the channel for you. Now, without further ado, let's jump into it. Video preview here. We're going to talk about wide receiver Calvin Ridley. Roster outlook for the Atlanta Falcons. Talk about free agency, guys that they could look to keep and also guys that they should look to potentially add on top of this roster. And then, of course, the NFL draft. That's really where the Atlanta Falcons are going to have the most room to grow this offseason. They've got a pick in the top 10. They've also got a few other picks as well that they can look to use uh, to really improve this roster and upgrade what they've got currently on this team. Moving on here to wide receiver Calvin Ridley. I think he's going to be one of the biggest question marks this offseason around the entire NFL. He's already 27 years old. He's heading into his fifth year option season. So he's going to be making north of $10 million. The Atlanta Falcons have to make a decision on him, whether they see him to be a long part, uh, a long term part to this team, or if they see more value in moving him. To me, there's a few different options. Either they buy into him being a part of the Atlanta Falcons, even though maybe their window doesn't start right now while he's, you know, entering his, you know, the heart of his real prime. But I think that the best thing to do with him really is to trade him, try and see if you can get a high second round pick from a team like Jacksonville, maybe the New York Jets. There's a few other teams up there as well that maybe would be willing to give up a second round asset to bring in Calvin Ridley to aid a young quarterback. And for me in Atlanta, it just doesn't fit the timeline. Uh, you look at a guy who's 27 years old. Yeah, I know he's a good player, but when you have question marks about his mental health, if he's going to be uh, able to be around the team all the time, if you could turn him into an asset, that would be very beneficial. I don't necessarily know if he gets uh, a deal done for, say, pick 33 from Jacksonville uh, or a pick maybe like 38 from the New York Jets. Perhaps that's kind of what you're looking at for his value, maybe a little bit lower. Maybe a team in the 40s would like to take a risk on him. But uh, for me, Atlanta, Calvin Ridley, I just don't see the two being the best together. I think moving Calvin Ridley would be beneficial for this team. I know he's a great receiver when he plays. I don't have any concerns or questions about that. And the Atlanta Falcons are better with him on the field. Don't get me wrong. But there's a lot of questions up in the air right now about what Calvin Ridley is going to be, if he's going to even come back to this team right now. Maybe just wash your hands of it. Try and bring in a pick uh, and build your team up for the future centered around Kyle Pitts. Uh, you've also got some other interesting pieces on this roster. So there's some room, room yet for Atlanta. You don't necessarily need to have Calvin Ridley in the fold to find long-term success in the future. Moving on now to the offensive players under contract. Of course, these are some of the key guys that I want to headline here. Quarterback Matt Ryan, he will be back next season. Arthur Smith said he wants to keep him back uh, and barring a great trade offer. I think Matt Ryan is the quarterback of 2022 here for the Atlanta Falcons, and that's exactly what I would do as well. Keep him around. He's going to steer a steady ship. 
He's going to keep everything calm and fluid on offense. Uh, and I think they just need a little bit more skilled talents around him at the wide receiver position specifically. They also have running back Mike Davis still under contract. He's on a very, very nice deal. Wide receiver Calvin Ridley, we've talked about him. He is under contract with that fifth year option. Perhaps he does not play a snap for the Falcons in 2022 though. Tight end Kyle Pitts, of course, he is the star player on this Atlanta Falcons team. Had a phenomenal rookie season, nearly record setting for tight end uh, at that rookie age mark. And he's been great in his early career. I think he's someone who, if he gets a little bit better in the red zone, could become a premier all world type of tight end. And I think that's a, what Atlanta is hoping to see from him. Then you look at the offensive line here, and it's an interesting group. Offensive tackle Jake Matthews, he's doing quite a bit of money. You also have tackle Kayla McGarry. And then the uh, guard positions, you've got Jalen Mayfield, someone who can maybe kick out to a little bit of tackle, and then also Chris Lindstrom. So it's kind of a weaker group. Of course, losing Alex Mack to the 49ers last offseason did hurt this group as well. Uh, and I think that they could use a little bit more help along that offensive line for sure. Although they do have some decent pieces at this point. Not any top tier offensive linemen, but I think they have a decent group of average offensive linemen and continuity sometimes can be really good for that as well. Uh, but if there is ways for them to upgrade, whether they feel like that's in the first or second round of the NFL draft or in free agency, they should at least explore those avenues for me. Moving on to the defensive side of the ball here now, key defensive guys under contract, Grady Jarrett, Tyler Davison, Marlon Davidson, linebacker Deion Jones, cornerback AJ Terrell, and safety Richie Grant. For me, Grady Jarrett, clearly one of the best players on their team. He's a force up the middle, and I think one of the more underrated players throughout the NFL. He doesn't get enough uh, praise for his impact on Sundays for this Falcons team. They are much better with him. He kind of empowers Deion Jones defensively in the run game, eats up a lot of blocks. He's huge for them. They also have a nice rotation here with guys like Tyler Davison and Marlon Davidson behind him. They've got some pretty strong interior defensive line play. They just badly need to find some long-term edge support uh, to get after the quarterback a little bit more often. But I like what they have in the middle. Linebacker Deion Jones, an extremely athletic linebacker, someone who's had a really, really good start to his career. And a guy who I think going forward is going to be a key part of this Falcons defense. Cornerback A.J. Terrell, one of the best lockdown cornerbacks in the NFL, does not get enough praise. Falcons fans, trust me, I see it. I know how good he is. This is another reason why you should be subscribed to the channel because he doesn't get the national recognition that he deserves. He's an absolute beast for the Atlanta Falcons. Even at his young age, uh, being a younger player in the NFL, he's been phenomenal thus far. And I think the Falcons, very, very lucky to have him. He's one of the best players on this team and one of the better cornerbacks in the entire NFL. And then safety, Richie Grant, a guy they took out of UCF. Not this, pa uh, this past draft, excuse me, uh, last offseason. He's someone who does have a lot of potential. I like him as a thumper. I think he's someone who can uh, play up in the box if you need him to, but isn't terrible out in coverage either. Uh, I think he's going to be a, a key safety going forward for them. I still think they could use another safety, but Richie Grant does provide a lot uh, at that safety position. And then this is really going to be the part of the, the video that gets interesting here because the Falcons, one of the teams that's going to have a tough offseason based off of who is entering free agency. Guys, they have to look to retain edge Dante Fowler Jr. He's one of their better edges. They have to try and find a way to keep him. However, he's going to have an expensive price tag. Foyasada Luakun, one of the better linebackers in football as well, does not get his praises sung enough either. He's really, really solid. Uh, I like what he can bring, especially next to Deion Jones. Those two guys really know how to work together at the linebacker position. Running back Cordero Patterson, what a breakout year for him in Arthur Smith's system. The issue for him, he is a little bit older at that running back spot. Of course, he's not going to be that generic traditional running back where he's going to run the ball between the tackles. But the way that they're using him with high volume, I don't know how long he's going to hold up with his current age. So I'm not sure exactly if they're going to look to bring him back. I think they would. Uh, but his price tag might get interesting this offseason with how some offensive coordinators and coaching staffs might view him as a potential free agent addition. Wide receiver Russell Gage, a really good slot operator. The issue with him is he just doesn't do a ton after the catch. Not going to have a lot of yards on a season even when he has a ton of catches uh, he's a PPR king for fantasy purposes but he uh, doesn't rack up a ton of yards isn't really good in the red zone he's a nice little piece at wide receiver however he's not ever going to be that number one type of guy that Atlanta would like like him to be Olamai Zacchaeus another guy who can maybe start to the field a little bit I like him a little bit for the Atlanta Falcons he's not going to be 
uh, a super key contributor. You, If you lose him in free agency, that's one of those things you're going to have to be okay with. Uh, they would probably like to keep him. He can be a, uh, a flex wide receiver three, maybe wide receiver four for a team. But at the end of the day, when you lose a guy like that, it doesn't really rock the boat too much. Hayden Hurst, though, tight end. I think they would really like to keep him back. I think they like the idea of using Kyle Pitts out wide, out in space, a little bit more out of the slot position. And you, utilizing Hayden Hurst at that tight end spot. Now, Kyle Pitts does make him a little more expendable. If they did lose Hayden Hurst, they would be fine. They would be able to thrive. Kyle Pitts could maybe become even more of a matchup nightmare playing at the true tight end spot. But I think Hayden Hurst is a much better blocking tight end than Kyle Pitts at this point, at least. Uh, and someone who I think they would like to bring back. Cornerback Isaiah Oliver, another young guy uh, at that cornerback spot who I think could be a solid number two cornerback for them, at least a number three. Uh, there is some value to that. They're going to run a lot of man coverage. Uh, and I think he does fit that scheme fairly well. So I think Atlanta would be uh, uh, very apt to keep him, uh, at least in the fold. And then Youngway Koo, not very often you have to talk about a kicker here. Four key players headed toward free agency, but I think they would like to keep him. He really found a home in Atlanta after getting cut from the Los Angeles Chargers a few years back. Uh, and I think both sides are better with this marriage. I think he's going to stay in Atlanta there's a lot to do this offseason, though, for the Atlanta Falcons. They have to try and find ways to keep these guys here, but also improve their roster as well. And according to Spot Track, they're only uh, actually going to have negative money. Uh, there is a few ways that they can make this up, though. They can restructure some contracts, adjust some salary into signing bonuses, uh, try and move up some contract years, can also try and mitigate cap hits by adding on non-guaranteed years. There are certain ways that they can go about trying to save some money on the books. Atlanta, they're going to try and pull some of those triggers, though, because they need to get a little bit better. And free agency is a good way to do that. I think that they could open up close to 10, maybe $15 million and make a couple nice fringe signings that really do help this team. Looking at some of those guys out here, cornerback Traverius Ward from the Kansas City Chiefs, he's a perfect fit for the Atlanta Falcons, someone who I think is going to actually have a pretty solid free agency market when you look at his ability and man-to-man -man cover skills the Kansas City Chiefs run more man coverage than any other team in the NFL at about 65 percent of their defensive snaps in man coverage the next closest uh in the last couple of years have been the Tennessee Titans and the Atlanta Falcons so Atlanta here they're looking for a man cover corner Traverius Ward could be that guy across from AJ Terrell I would really like seeing him go in there he's younger could fit the timeline uh, and has experience covering number one guys, which is going to be very valuable. Him and AJ Terrell are going to be a really good combination. You have to look in division there. You have to face teams like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Carolina Panthers have a couple of good wideouts. Uh, you also look at the New Orleans Saints. You're going to get Michael Thomas back. You have to have cornerbacks to throw at guys. Javarius Wood, a uh, Ward, a good option here. Then you also look at cornerback Bryce Callahan out of Denver. He's been a really, really solid slot cornerback throughout his career doesn't get penalized barely ever uh, and he's someone who even though he doesn't make a ton of plays on the football I think could be a reliable man-to-man -man corner out of the slot those two guys you assign both of them instantly improve your cornerback play immensely then offensively I think they need a little bit more of a field stretcher they struggled really badly against man coverage this year only averaging about four and a half yards per pass in those scenarios and I think they need someone who can really stretch the, the ball down the field a little bit more to me there's some options out here Christian Kirk, he's going to be the more expensive of these three options because of his age uh, and some of the projections that teams are going to place on him with what they think he could be. Marquez Valdez-Scantling, though, he's been in that role for Green Bay, and he's been really important in opening up the middle of the field for a guy like Devontae Adams. Valdez-Scantling, not going to be one of the top receivers, but I think he can function as a wide receiver three help stretch the field a little bit and give Matt Ryan a deep target that he hasn't had for the last couple of years. And then Will Fuller, uh, he's basically Marquez Valdez-Scantling, but a little bit more productive in his career, way more injury prone, uh, and a player that uh, I just can't rely on being there on Sundays. For me, Will Fuller, I just don't see him being a better acquisition than Marquez Valdez-Scantling, but I do think he is a player that the Atlanta Falcons will look at. And then also guard Andrew Norwell's out here. He's a little bit of a struggle bus when it comes to run blocking, but he is a really good pass blocking guard. It kind of depends on the identity Arthur Smith wants to take with this team and what his envision, what he envisions going into next season. Because of course, when he was with Tennessee, he did such a good job running the football consistently. But now this past year, 
didn't have a real running back who could take advantage of the stuff in between the tackles. Maybe he wants to turn to a little bit more of a pass heavy scheme, utilize Cordero Patterson a little bit more out of the backfield if they choose to re-sign him and are able to. A guy like Andrew Norwell, who holds up pretty well in pass protection at the guard spot, could make some sense as a cheap budget signing. He's already had a big payday in the past with Jacksonville. Probably isn't looking to cash in huge this offseason. You could probably get him on a pretty fair contract. So I think Atlanta here is going to be about some budget signings and trying to play along the margins here, bringing some talent. Traverius Ward, to me, he's the top guy, though. If you can walk away with him, this is a really good free agency period for Atlanta. Moving into the NFL draft here, these are the picks on the screen. They have pick eight in round one, picks 43 and 59. Of course, their trade to the Tennessee Titans of Julio Jones didn't net them that extra second round pick. Pick 72, that comes in the third round. Pick 110 in the fourth. Rounds five and six, they have 149, 186, and 217. So they got a pretty decent collection of assets. No seventh round pick this year, but of course they do have two sixes and two second rounders. So it's going to be an interesting offseason for the Atlanta Falcons. Let's get into some potential draft targets. Day one here, it depends on what you're looking at. For me, I think that I would stare down at the edge position and try and find guys who can really help me. And it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for a speed edge rusher here, which I think is really what they should look at when it comes to what they already have at the D tackle spot, they have a lot of strength already in power. You go with a speed guy like David Ajabo out of Michigan who can really fly off the edge, has really good bend, good athleticism, and can get to the quarterback and forces the ball out when he gets there. Really, really good at getting strip sacks. He's a strip specialist. On the other hand, though, you could really strengthen what you're already good at. Go with a guy like George Karloftis out of Purdue, who's better than a job in the run game and also more of a power style rusher. He's going to use his hands uh, and leverage to convert it to power. And I think he's someone who uh, could help shrink the pocket even more for opposing teams. He's not going to be a guy like David Ajabo, where I think he's going to win off the edge consistently with speed. I think his athleticism and potential is a little bit lower than Ajabo's, but I do think he's going to be a productive player in both the run and pass game wide receiver perhaps with Calvin Ridley potentially out maybe they're looking for a big time number one guy that could be Traylon Burks out of Arkansas who has a lot of momentum right now potentially could see him going eighth overall to Atlanta and you could really retrofit this offense quickly with Kyle Pitts at tight end uh, or a slot wide receiver depending on how you view him and you also have Traylon Burks at wide receiver he's six foot three can play outside the numbers but he's also very good after the catch adds a little bit more dynamism into this offense and would really help against man coverage uh, with his ability to play after the catch. Wide receiver Drake London. Uh, he's a big, big body wide receiver, six foot five. He has a really good catch radius uh, and extremely productive. He missed about half the season in college because of a uh, fractured ankle, similar injury to what Jalen Waddell had suffered uh, and still won Pac-12 player of the year offensively. So there is a lot of talent there. He's going to be productive, and I think he's someone who could really be a good outside threat for Matt Ryan and also would really help them in the red zone, something they've struggled at for years there in Atlanta. And then defensively, there's a few options here. If you want to go cornerback, if you can't get some of those guys in free agency, Ahmad Garner out of Cincinnati, a phenomenal man-to-man -man cover corner, does not give up touchdowns, knows how to keep things in front of him, also can wrap up pretty well. He's just the definition of a of pure cornerback. He's good in coverage, solid in the run game. He's going to be able to make tackles that are in front of him. Uh, and his game against Alabama was really the prove-it game for him, and he played well in that one. Uh, so I think he's really solidified himself as a potential top 10 pick. Kyle Hamilton, if he falls at eight, I think he should be the player that the Atlanta Falcons do take and just go best player available and try and figure everything out later because Kyle Hamilton is going to be a beast. He has great instincts at safety really good reaction time and someone who can play that deep safety spot if you want Richie Grant up in the box or he himself can come up into the box and make plays in the run game as well. He's phenomenal. Offensive tackle like McWanu, I threw him on here because I think if he was available at eight, the Falcons would consider him to try and establish a little bit more of a run game for Arthur Smith, who we know does like to run the football, but I don't think he's going to be their pick eight. I, I think he's going to be a top five pick this year, but you never really know. The NFL draft is always crazy. Perhaps he does slide to eight and Atlanta grabs him. It could make some sense to me. I think they could use a run blocker like him coming out of NC State. He's a mauler. Moving into day two, of course, they do have three picks in here. Here's some of the top guys, I think. Looking at two really good speed edges here, Nick Benito, Drake Jackson. This is the example of, hey, maybe round one, they don't go with a guy like David Ajabo or George Karloftis. They come in 
Maybe they go wide receiver or they go with a safety in round one. And you want to tr come back, you need to find an edge if you're Atlanta. And one of those two guys could get the job done for you. They both can rush off the edge with speed. Pretty good bend, and I think does really fill out the defensive line a little bit better than what they currently have. Wide receiver John Mechie from Alabama. He He's an interesting prospect. I'm not in love with him as a number one guy, but I do think he adds a little bit more consistency uh, and ability to beat man coverage one on one. So I think looking at what he could provide, it does make some sense that Atlanta would consider him. Tight end Trey McBride. This is an interesting name to throw on here because he's someone who's really, really good in the run game, but can also be a volume tight end where maybe you run a lot of two tight end sets or you put Kyle Pitts, continue to play him at the slot or outside. Uh, and use him as that gadget guy like we knew he could be when they drafted him fourth overall. Trey McBride's a beast, though. I think he could be a really nice pickup for any offense in Atlanta. When you already have a dynamic tight end who can play pretty much anywhere offensively, you have the availability to take one if you think that he is the best player available that could fit your scheme. Then cornerbacks here, Darian Kendrick, Roger McCurry, two good man cover guys, both played in the SEC, one at Georgia this past year, and then the other at Auburn. And those two guys, I think, could fit really well in Atlanta here of course uh, ironically both of them are Georgia kids as well which uh, we know if we know anything Atlanta is going to be looking in state a little bit uh, at some of their prospects potentially they have a better look at them than most teams so Darian Kendrick Roger McCree would not be surprised if those two guys were draft picks this year for the Atlanta Falcons and then day three here it gets a little bit more thin it's hard to exactly pick out certain guys because it's going to be dependent on what they take so these are my overall draft needs for them they need to find the speed edge they need to find a man cover corner at some point in the draft an outside speed wide receiver that can create a little bit of separation and then some interior offensive line help for sure i think they could use an offensive tackle if available but i think interior offensive line usually falls a little bit more and you can get a little bit more talent at that point late in day three i think if they can address some of these things find little niche players that do fit what they're looking for uh, Atlanta could take a big step forward next year. I don't necessarily see them as a playoff team by next season, but I do see them as a team that can be much improved uh, and really win some statement games in division. And I think if Tom Brady does retire with Sean Payton no longer being the head coach in New Orleans, Carolina, they're kind of uh, up and down right now. We don't really know what they're going to be. Perhaps Atlanta does walk away with the division. If a Tom Brady retirement does happen, it's an open division and maybe Atlanta with a good offseason, it's going to be skilled enough to take that division. You never really know. It's going to be a lot to keep up on. Remember, we do have that quarter zip giveaway for the New York Giants. Make sure you guys leave a comment to be entered for that. And make sure you're subscribed as well. Those are the two most important things. Leave a like on today's video. We do really appreciate you guys watching. And also turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on more content here at Utility Sports. More giveaways and everything else that we do on this channel. Hopefully you guys enjoy. If you did, leave a like and we'll catch you in the very next utility sports video.